Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette in our series, Is It Worth It? Today, we review the Gucci Horsebit Loafer, which is a very iconic piece. If you haven't already done so, please check out our other Is It Worth It? videos about iconic items such as the Mont Blanc fountain pen or the Burberry trench coat. Gucci is an Italian high fashion brand and they usually move very quickly with the trends. However, they've produced one thing ever since 1953 and it's the Gucci Horsebit Loafer model 1953. Because it has been so popular over the years, there are many iterations and models. Some are slippers with a soft heel. You can find them with different logos, but the original one has the classic horsebit and no logos that are visible. You might wonder, at the end of the day, it's just a loafer, isn't it? Well, not quite. First, let's talk about the history of Gucci. Gucci is a company. It was started in 1920 in Florence by a man named Guccio Gucci. Originally, they were a manufacturer of high-end leather goods, including saddleware. By the 1950s and 60s, Hollywood started were wearing Gucci, and so it became very famous and the focus changed. Now it was more about consumer products and shoes, not so much about horse or riding wear. The canvas double G with red and green detail appeared out of a leather shortage due to World War II, but it instantly became synonymous with Gucci. The Gucci family almost ran the brand into a ground in the 1980s and was sold in 1988. By 1990, the creative director Tom Ford was installed and he really helped the brand to regain that old fame. Of course, he was very stylish himself and so he created his own brand and you can learn more about his style in our article on our website here. Ford's successor as creative director at Gucci became Alessandro Michele and he was actually hired by Tom Ford himself. Under his reign, Gucci has turned away from traditional minimalism and it has become much louder and bolder. In my opinion, it doesn't have much in common with classic style anymore, yet the Gucci Horsebit Loafer remains unchanged. So what makes the Gucci Horsebit Loafer so special? In 1953, Gucci opened their New York presence and offices. At that time, Gucci noticed the popularity of the loafer in the US in general. Gucci decided to change it up a bit. He refined the lines, he added a horse bit. After all, Gucci had been making saddles in the past and he offered it in black, even though most loafers at the time came in tones of brown. The result was a pair of shoes that was just formal enough to be worn with a suit, yet at the same time, it was more comfortable and more casual than most other black shoes on the market. The shoes became an instant success and by 1969, Gucci was selling 84,000 pairs of the horse bit loafer in the US alone. People like John F. Kennedy and Johnny Agnelli helped the Gucci loafer to become so popular. Today, it's an iconic shoe and in fact, it's the only shoe that is part of the permanent collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York and it has been so since 1985. Apart from the original 1953 style, you'll also find many different others. One that is particularly popular right now is the Jordan, which is with AA, not like Air Jordans, and the Brixton, which is soft in the back. Of course, you can also find the 1970s version with a much thicker sole and higher heel, but that's a very special item. I like to stick with the originals. So in this video, I talk about the black classic 1953 style, which currently retails for $670. That's for the calf leather version. You can also find crocodile skins in brown, black, or navy, which retails for $2,600. So what's the hype all about, you might wonder? Well, it's a shoe that comes with a certain cachet. It's very recognizable and people can see it, and if they do, they know that you spend $670 on a pair of shoes. Basically, it's a moccasin style construction, which is hand sewn, and it has this horse bit which is gold, not silver, traditionally. The funny thing is, the shoes have changed slightly if you look at older models, and the horsebit itself seems to have been gold-plated, versus today, it looks more like a cheaper Zemek version without the gold. I wonder if they cut some production costs there. It's definitely a shoe that has the character of Italian style. It's more effortless, let's say a shoe from Elm Edmonds, and it can be worn with a suit as well as more casual combinations. That being said, I don't think it quite works well with a double-breasted suit because it is more formal than a single-breasted suit. Also, with combinations, the color black is not super ideal for casual looks. I understand at the time it was revolutionary, it worked then, but in recent years, casual shoes are usually brown or navy, maybe sometimes green, but never black. Next up, let's look at the construction and workmanship of the Gucci Horsebit Loafer. 
first, when I looked at it on the website, I was quite disappointed because there wasn't much detail. They just said black leather and horse bit, but they didn't talk about what kind of leather, how it was tanned, how it was constructed, what it was sewn, glued, what kind of construction it was. And so I was wary because I expected that it wasn't a good shoe after all. Now, when I got the shoe, the actual first impression was much better. You could see the moccasin in top was sewn by hand. That was quite obvious because of the different stitch density on the side and in the front, which is a hallmark of handwork. You could also see little puckering along the edges, which is typical for hand-sewn moccasins. The leather is very nice and of good quality. It is hand-stained, but that makes more of a difference with brown shoes, not really with black. However, Italians are very good with leather, especially around Florence, and so you can rest assured that you get a quality hide on Gucci loafers. Surprisingly, the sole construction of the shoe is sewn and not glued. It is a Blake stitch that is nicely channeled, meaning the sole is cut open, then sewn, and then the seam at the bottom of the sole is hidden because the sole is kind of shaped outwards again. The edges of the sole are rounded nicely. There's some edge painting down there. And at the heel, you find little star symbols, and that hasn't changed from older Gucci horsebit loafers. The shoe has a nicely built flat heel with a rubber patch and two brass nails. I think they're more for decoration because the whole thing is glued on. You also find some breast nails in the front toe area that are supposed to prevent premature wear. I don't think it really works, but it can't hurt the longevity of the shoe. I wonder why I add this little star symbol. It may be something to help distinguish them from fake shoes, but I'm not quite sure about it. In general, the sole is very thin and extremely flexible, which makes it very comfortable. At the same time, because it's so thin, you're probably not gonna get a super long wear out of it. That being said, you can always return your shoes to Gucci for repair, and they take them back as long as you don't bring them to local cobblers in between. Of course, they also charge more than the local cobbler would. Nevertheless, it's nice to know that there is a factory resoling option. Also, bear in mind that it can take two to three months to get your shoes repaired, so either plan ahead or go local. Another area I was quite surprised by was the lining of the modern 1953 version. Because it's mostly a textile, you can see at the bottom of the shoe that it's a textile. It doesn't say where it's cotton or linen. I suspect it's one of the other or a blend. Could also be a poly blend, but I don't know because Gucci doesn't provide any more information about it. The good thing is it works really well for summery weathers because when your feet sweat, no matter if you wear them bare feet or with no-show socks or with regular socks, the cotton or the material will absorb more than the leather and it will be more comfortable. If you look at the older Gucci horsebit loafers, they were all leather lined in a regular tan leather. Interestingly, there seems to be no foam pad underneath that leather's insole in the heel area, and I wonder why they didn't add that. So now the big question, is the Gucci loafer worth $670 or $2,600 for the crocodile versions? The pros of the shoe are that it's not a flashy shoe. It's an iconic shoe and it is an original. Unlike many other Gucci or designer products, it doesn't have big visible logos on the outside of the shoe, which in my book is a huge plus. It's a comfortable shoe made on a classic last, made in the same shape since 1953, so it's likely not gonna go out of style anytime soon. Also, if you ever get bored with the design of the shoe, it's very easy to sell them and you still get quite a bit of money for them. On eBay, usually a pair of 1953 Horsebit loafers goes around $300, which is not bad for a used shoe. Also, the shoe is of good quality. Honestly, I was a bit surprised about that because I expected less quality because I just assumed a fashion brand just charges more for the name. That being said, you'll receive a decent quality shoe that's not just garbage. It's definitely much higher quality than the Cole Han loafers that sell for $120. Now, the cons of the shoe, first of all, are the cost. $670 is quite a bit of money for an off-the-rack shoe. Now, I said that the quality is good, and while that's true, the value is not quite there. In my opinion, a shoe of this category should retail more for $250 to $300, but because it's Gucci, because it's an iconic original piece, you'll of course pay for the name and all the marketing that goes with Gucci. Well, some people like the soft construction, others want something that's a little sturdier and especially a sole that will last a little longer. Now, that's a choice that you personally have to make. So what about the crocodile leather versions? I think crocodile leather is always nice on loafers, whether it's a penny loafer or a horse bit loafer or even a tassel loafer. And you can learn more about the differences in our loafer guide on our website here. That being said, crocodile leather is always more expensive 
And if you buy it from another brand, you probably have to pay $1,200 or $1,100. At Gucci, it's $2,600 because after all, it's Gucci. So in conclusion, is the Gucci Horsebit loafer worth it? The answer is, it depends. If you want an iconic classic style item that's like a Eames chair, for example, or the Barcelona chairs from Mies van der Rohe, then yes, you have to pay extra for the design, for the originality, and you just have to suck it up. On the other hand, if you're interested in classic style, in good quality, and a good value ratio, I don't think the shoe is worth it, simply because you can get two pairs of shoes of similar or better quality for the same price. If you want a status symbol, the shoe is definitely worth the money because it's very recognizable and it's not a garbage quality. It's a decent quality. You just pay a little more and if the status is what you want, that's what you get with this shoe. Personally, I don't think it's worth the money for myself simply because I don't need a status symbol. I look at the quality and the value I get and a black horse pit loafer is just not really adaptable to my wardrobe. If it was in brown, I think it would be more versatile for my wardrobe. At the same time, $670 for the calf leather and $2,600 for the crocodile version is simply over the top in my opinion. So if you like the look of the horse pit loafer, but you don't want to spend that much money, which shoe should you buy? Well, it's a little difficult because it always depends on your exact budget and what you want, right? You have the Cole Haan versions that are around $100, you can find more expensive versions, such as the ones from Ellen Edmonds, which are with a thicker sole, but otherwise look very similar. Then you can have something like Jay Butler, which is a Mexico-made version of the horse pit loafer with a shorter vamp, which is more in line with the preppy style. And to learn more about it, you can check out the videos we did with Justin Jeffers from the fine young gentleman who is the founder of the company and we'll have some video interviews with him here. For $670, you can have custom horse bit loafers made exactly to your specifications in the colors and the leather with a sublime fit that is superior to an off the rack shoe. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel so other videos from the Is It Worth It series come right to your inbox. In today's outfit, I'm wearing a Gucci horse bit combination, meaning I'm wearing a green jacket with a houndstooth pair of pants and a striped green shirt with a blue micro button matter silk tie by Fort Belvedere that contrasts the green of the jacket and the shirt. The pocket square is likewise from Fort Belvedere. It has bronze colors that go well with the green and I pick up the tones in my socks as well as the red in the tie. The shoes are the modern 1953 classic Gucci horse bit loafers. And I think with this ensemble, it works quite well. I could also wear it as a suit, maybe as a two piece suit. I wouldn't go double breasted and I wouldn't go three piece because it's just too formal on top and too informal at the bottom, despite the color being black. The cufflinks I wear are Eagle Claw cufflinks from Fort Belvedere with a lapis lazuli stone. They're blue, which picks up the color of the tie and contrasts with the green of the shirt and jacket. My ring on the other end is a bloodstone with red and green tones that harmonizes with the tie, the pocket square, as well as the jacket and the shirt. <laughs> Thank you.